Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm uh, Claudio Morgan, the host of the Spiritual Inspired uh, podcast. And uh, my guest uh, today is uh, Tracy L. Clark. Tracy has an incredible story to tell. She was born with her legs and hips detached, a pectus excavatum leaving a deep hole in her chest, her stomach valve closed shut, and an extremely damaged nervous system that caused excruciating pain. Over the course of her life, she had nearly, nearly died three times. Sickness, disease, and even a kidnapping were just some of the traumatic experiences she endured growing up. 17 years ago, she made a difficult decision to leave a marriage that no longer served her. After living with two children, she was told that her body was shutting down again. She knew what was happening. She began to learn the secrets that allow her to transform her body. Her life, once full of suffering, pain, and illness, transform into a life full of joy, happiness, wellness, and financial prosperity. Tracy is the author of God, Where Are You? It's Me, and The 31 Days of Prayer. Tracy, thank you very much for uh, joining me today. Thank you. I'm so thrilled to be here. What an honor and a pleasure. Um, you know, all these difficult moments in your life I just mentioned are somehow way behind you. But I would like to go a bit deeper into them because some of my viewers might battle the same demons right now. So how did you manage uh, the, the health shortcomings during childhood and then adolescence? Yeah, I had a lot. As you said, I was born. So I was born into the world with all these physical issues. And I was also one of the youngest kids. I'm in Canada to be diagnosed with, with ulcers, diverticulitis and irritable bowel F5. So I had like, you know, on top of everything else. And I just thought that that was what you were to do. You were to just live with it, be in pain. I, I always say I used to shake like a Pez doll like this all the time. <laughs> I did. And I went to see many neurologists who said, oh, you have a tick, it's damaged, nothing you can do about it. And I just lived in that system. I thought it was normal. And I thought pain and suffering, I thought it was normal. That's what I grew up in. I thought everybody lived like that. And I didn't know any different. And then it wasn't, so I was managing it. Like you said, that was the word, just manage, take a pill, take a whatever, just manage. And I was super stressed all the time. I didn't realize because when I had the kidnapping and I was little, I opened a porthole and I was seeing things that weren't very good. There'd be more of the dark side of things. And they just said back then it was like seven in the seventies, right? It's, oh, trauma, whatever. It's just, and they didn't talk about it. So I just thought that's what it is. But when I got the, when I was 32, which I like to say was yesterday, even though we know it wasn't, <laughs> I got the, uh, I got this, this really sorry, there's nothing else we can do for you. You're going to have to live like this. And my body was shutting down again. I literally couldn't eat anything. I was like two pounds. I couldn't eat anything. And, um, I, I say it was my, whatever you want to call it, your come to Jesus moment. You're like, I was just literally, I'm not a religious person that way, but I was just on my knees. I'm like, if there's anything out there, I didn't believe in anything. I was almost like an atheist. I didn't, I was like, there's no, bigger universe presence, nothing. I was that shut down. But when you're given a diagnosis like that, and I had two little kids in tow, you literally, that was my wake up. I always knew I was different. I always knew I didn't fit. I never liked any of the systems. I felt like an old lady in a little body when I was a kid. And I just would, I remember walking around a schoolyard at five going, I feel like I'm a hundred years old. What's wrong with me? I'm a little old lady in this body. And miraculously, you know, the universe opens up when you ask. And I was led to people that were like, is this what you see? You're not crazy. Like your body knows what to do. Look at all this trauma. It doesn't know how to get rid of it. And so I started to study and learn. And I have to tell you, it was the, I think I had three energy sessions with my mentor at that time, who's no longer with us today. And she, I, I went to a restaurant and I ate not even thinking about it. Cause I used to have to really watch what I would order and eat. And I ate and I left the restaurant and I'm like, wait a minute. I have no stomach problem. Wait a minute. I, I, I just ate pasta. I haven't eaten. How did I wasn't like, it was a total, I blanked out moment. And it was at that point where I'm like, I never had an issue since. And I go, I got really into the science of the body. I was fascinated by it. And then I realized wait a minute, we don't even need the science. I would go, I got pants. I'm like, 
we all have the power inside of us to heal ourselves. And I know without a shadow of a doubt, this is going to be the way of the new earth and the future we're walking into. It's going to be integrative because everybody has that ability. Interesting. So I will go much deeper uh, later on in the, in the medical uh, field, but now you just said that you studied something which is available to any one of us. That means even today's doctors can study that in parallel with what they are doing in, in the medical school and become much better at what they are doing. Is that a correct statement? Yeah, because what I learned, and a lot of people probably experience this, because I, I grew up in the system, you know, I had I had a near-death experience in the system, being in the hospital while they were giving me medicine. My body was rejecting everything. I flatlined and they had to crash cart me. And what I realized was they look at the body. So if I come in and say, I have a, a pain in my shoulder, they'll say, okay, well, let's look at the pain. They're just looking at the shoulder. But when you understand the energy of the body, right, you're born, I always say it's the heart drive. So our, your heart drives, like your hard drive on your computer, right? If you lose your hard drive on your computer, you're hooped. So I say it's a heart drive. So I call it the heart drive. But that heart drive is talking to every organ. We're given every organ because it has a purpose. Everything has a purpose. So 99% of the time I realized, well, if you have a pain in the shoulder, yeah, most of it's emotional, but the root may be sitting in your knee and you move it out of the knee and then the pain of the shoulder would go. So what happened is I realized they were looking at the body as to where was your pain versus what's going on in the world, everything's connected, our outer world, our inner world. And when I, when I narrowed in on that, and then I started channeling how to learn to talk to the body, how to do things like that. I was like, things just were leaving. And my one doctor said to me, I do not understand what you're doing. I'm not going to profess I do, but keep doing what you're doing. Cause I can't explain how your body's repairing. I can't, I have no answers for you. And she was wonderful. And I said, thank you. This is why we need integrative. But why do you think there is no desire in them to go further down the same road you went and learn more in order to help their patients? Why, why is that? I fully believe, and Dr. Bruce Lipton said this, I heard him say it, and I believe he's 100% accurate. And I know he, I know he is because I've been in this. He said you could tell exactly how a doctor is trained, where they went to school by how they treat a patient. Unfortunately, that system is funded by, you know, places that just want you to take medicine because it's a business. If you see, I was a great customer for 32 years. I've been what back to the doctor, maybe twice. I'm 50 years old. And when I went, I said, I think there's some arthritis in my hip. Could you please do a scan? Oh, no, no, no. How would you know that? And then they did a scan. Oh, there's a little bit a month later. Okay. Could you do another scan? Oh, the scan must've been wrong. It's not there. Okay. Thank you. That's what I used them for. So they're afraid that if we learn, this is what I've realized. If we learn to tap into what we can do and still use them as integrative, all of a sudden there's a whole bunch of people that won't need to keep taking a pill because the, what I've learned from working with so many people, I'm not anti-medicine. However, it's meant for a short time. So if you show up with something, take it, but it's not meant for life. If it's meant for life, something's wrong. But if you know what it is for a short time and you work with it with the body, then what happens is the body, it, it gets rid of whatever's there and you can reduce. And I've seen this time and time again. So a lot of times, once you take a medicine, say to help your pancreas, when you've been taking it now for a year or two years, the pancreas forgets to function. And now that it forgets to function, you need the medicine and you have to retrain it to function. Your organs are brilliant. And that's why I believe they don't want people to really realize the power they have to heal themselves. And it's, it's a journey. Sure. And it's a whole process, but then all of a sudden you're not a very good customer. I'm a really bad customer over there now because I'm never there. <laughs> yeah. I'm a bad customer as well. And I give you a quick example um, I call my um, doctor and I ask him to prescribe a medicine which could prevent, um, you know, the virus what's going around, let's say. Uh, and I want to pretty much to test him, to, to test his reaction. 
And he said, I won't recommend it because it has multiple side effects and there is no uh, research to prove that it's effective. And I said, doctor, it's been on the market for 40, 50 years. There is plenty of research. And then he asked me if I got inoculated. And I said, why? I said, because it will you know, diminish the effect. And he said, yes, but it wasn't approved. And there are people with a lot of side effects. So I said, I am willing to take responsibility for one medicine, which has been around for tens of years, but then yeah. you are recommending something which has not been approved. And if I ask you to sign a liability form, if I have any side effects, you'll just run away like there is no tomorrow. Yeah. So what's the ethical balance there in, in what you are trying me to, to do? So I, I tested on, on my own just to see how they will react. Yeah. And this is what I always say is part of the, like, as we're, I always say leaving old earth to new earth and old earth is all these authoritative systems that are crumbling. And that's part of crumbling because now people are waking up going, well, if we have this solution, why are we doing this? Cause this solution is really fast, really easy. And I work with many people like that, right? Like very easy. Let's do it. Let's promote health. Let's promote wellness, good peace of mind, loving each other, supporting each other. Cause when you move the stress too, right? Well, now all these, the world's in this such stress and fear, and we know fear, what does it do? And stress, it, it really activates the central nervous system. And then all of a sudden your D levels drop and then all of a sudden you're getting sick, right? So it's not, we can understand that. And so it's a narrative and it's a narrative that they want people to follow because again, it comes down to, to money that way. It really does. And that's why all of these systems, whether banking, government, we're gonna see them collapse. They will collapse over the coming years. Yeah, yeah. and you recently see the reaction to Joe Rogan's um, yeah. health recovery. In two days, yeah. he was back on his feet and all the yeah. mainstream media was hunting him down, You know, not in agreement with what he was saying and uh, why he got healthy yeah. very fast. And they, they didn't like that because they like us to be sick all the time and depend on them. And, and be a customer, like we were saying. Yes. And so yes. you're right. And they're, they're really afraid. But again, look at this. I'm so grateful that narrative's coming out because it's such a big reach, right? And it's like, why aren't we promoting health? There you go. There's another health. And it turns another person to go, wait a minute, just like me, I thought for 32 years, I thought I was doing exactly the right thing. I was a good little girl. I was following it all. And but I was band-aided together. And one thing then would break another thing, would break another thing. I looked like literally energetically the way I would see it was like, you know, you had those dolls, kids' dolls, and they put band-aids all over their dolls. Well, that's what most people look like. So they're terrified. And I love though that this narrative's coming out because more people are like, wait a minute, maybe I want to look more at my health. I want to look more at what is going on and have a communication because you know what's best for you. I know what's best for me. Maybe it's slightly different. But when you're connected, you know, and we don't need authoritative bodies dictating. We need people to work with, to be in sync with. So we know if you need penicillin, you need penicillin. 10 days, your body knows what to do with it. It's like, okay. Yeah. And then the very recently, maybe this, by the end of this week, I'll put out a video explaining the uh, parallel between the Inquisition um, and today's Inquisition is the modern Inquisition, but it's the same type of people healers, um, visionaries, uh, doctors, you know, people with certain sensibilities, they are not burnt uh, at stake, but they are pretty much censored and, uh, you know, pushed into a corner and, and call conspiracy theories. So I will put that video out and uh, make this parallel for people to understand what we are going through these days. And I see energetically, I do see as we go more into the new earth, it's going to be not the news we see now, it'll probably more be like things we're doing and intuitives, and it's going to be more energy healers, like we don't have enough on the planet, it's energy workers, energy healers, working in tandem together, like a whole holistic approach. And I really see that coming through people are the one thing about what's happening right now is people every day, I do hear more people waking up more people waking up, we see it around the world saying, I really got to take charge and accountability. So where people have given away their power, given away their power. Now, when you hear stories like the Joe Rogan, be like, well, wait a minute, I can take back my power. That's what it does to them. You, you can, everybody can do it. And that's what I think is so beautiful. And I know, I know when I started to do my work over 18 years ago, 
And everyone said I was crazy and you're weird and you're, yeah, we've all got it, right? Every one of us. And I was like, wow, that's why the kings and queens, they use tarot readers. They use energy workers. They did. They reused remote viewers, but they deemed us all bad through their religious lines and stuff, but get rid of us because they didn't want anybody else to have that power. And I remember working with a very well-known man and he said to me, I want you to be safe. I don't want anyone to know what you can do because I know what they do to people like you. Like you would all know his name. And I was like, I'll be fine. Don't worry. When my time's come, it comes. And he says, no, you know what they do? They, they don't want people like you out there. And this person is, you know, so well known. And I'm like, it's okay. I'm not worried about it. I'm not afraid because our time's coming where all of us, our gifts are coming back. And that is what they're afraid of. They're afraid that you can snap your fingers and your body starts to repair, yeah. but it's and, good. And then are you concerned about the new generations? Because they went through the, the school process which pretty much brainwashed them. And then they go into university. There is another level of uh, brainwashing. And I have my own examples. Um, so do you think oh, yeah. that we can turn them around? Are they going to wake up or they are going to be part of the matrix? Yeah, well, I have two daughters. One today is actually turning four or 24 and one is turning and just turned 27. So they've been through this process. <laughs> yeah, so I know. So I have one that her dad is in that. He's an English prof. So they're in that. She's stuck in that little matrix. And I have another one that's like, oh, okay. She's more like me. But what I notice with these kids is, yes, they have been ingrained a lot. But as these truths come out, some of them will keep their head in the sand, just like adults. But their program, their program, like when I look at my one daughter, that's very much over there with her dad. Now, she never was. And you can't turn that off totally. She's, she would hear spirit all the time. She's very intuitive, very sensitive, very empathic. And I see her coming back to some of that. These children, they all have it and it's going to get turned back on. So we'll probably get about 70% of them turned out over time, over the next 10 years as they go, what? No different than when you and I woke up, we're like, what? They're lying to us. What? I got to relearn something. What? They fed us a whole bunch of garbage. I see about 70% of them being able to come back and they'll use their gifts. They'll be happy because a lot of these kids, they've got them focused on video games, antidepressants, anxiety, medicine to suppress and as they learn something different, their abilities are going to start coming out and they're going to start having fun with it. You, it's going to take time, but I know we can get a lot of them to come back. Yeah, I like that version of the story. Thank you. Um, going back to your story, you mentioned opening up portals and feeling an old woman in a, a young body. Were you able to open up more port portal scenes and did you find out who that old woman is? Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of funny. So after the kidnapping, I had a gun on the back of my head and I blanked out. Right. And then I started opening these portals where I was seeing a lot of dark things. I thought I was crazy, but I knew they were in my room. I could feel them. And my parents were like, you know, they would attack me in the middle of the night, all this stuff. And that older lady, it was really interesting. It wasn't until years later, I realized that it was actually my deep soul speaking to me because I realized how old I really was <laughs> somebody point when I went through my own journey. So it was me. And that's why I felt so different. But when I really woke up because I could feel intensely, then I started to open these realms where I could see, I could hear, I could feel, and almost like doing little surgeries on the body and weird stuff was happening. And so, but it was that process because I kept shutting it down. Like you mentioned as a little kid in the seventies, right? You just shut it down. Nobody understands you. You're seeing things. So they think you're crazy. And that's just, so I didn't talk about it, but once I started to unlock it, once I started to realize, oh, I'm not crazy. Oh, you see that too. Okay. You can tell me what I'm seeing. Okay. I'm, I'm all right. And I started to interact with spirit and I started to open up more. And the key was because I would get energetically attacked a lot in the nighttime because that's where you're most vulnerable. I really had to learn how to let go of all that fear because when I started to let go of fear, I'm not afraid of dying. I've already done it a couple of times. Don't care. But when I let go of the fear, all these other portals opened and I'm, but I'm very clear. I'm not really interested in, yeah, you see the angels and I go to the God of my understanding, whatever that is to anybody. Um, you know, I have my guides I like to work with, but I don't really, 
for me, I don't want to open the realms. I get there's aliens. I get there's off worlders. I get all that. That's just not my area. I like to stay very connected in the body, connected to the God of my understanding. But the more I let go of fear, the more that energy opened and the more my abilities changed. So you are not doing or trying to do any interdimensional traveling. Oh, I, I went back in time the other day. No, I, I do go backwards and forwards. I let the body, I've been out of my body where I couldn't get back in for sure. I, I just like to stay very clear that, okay, these are my teams I work with because I, I have to tell you the first time I was out of my body and couldn't get back in and I'm looking at my body. I was, I was scared. I'm like, how am I going to get back in my body? I can't get back in my body. And I'm looking at my body laying there and here I am standing, but I'd see, I'd had those experiences with the near death too, coming back into my body, but this was not a near death. This was me just leaving my body to go travel and see what's happening. But yeah, even the other day, I, I literally went back to 1989 and I couldn't get out of it for a bit, but I was having fun. I realized what was happening, but I'm like, okay. And I brought that information. And what I like when you do travel like that in timelines, you actually open more gifts. Because even I noticed this week with the people I was working with, like stuff that's coming up is even stuff I couldn't have even predict. I'm like, wow, that's coming up now. We've definitely bumped into a whole new vibration. So I just, I get the aliens are out there. If ET wants to say hi, that's fine. But I just like to leave that to somebody else. <laughs> And, and touching on uh, being attacked by negative energies during night. And I, I again, I'm not afraid of, of, of dying, but the fear is that that negative energy might take over the body and do something to it or uh, yeah. take over in such a way that I don't have control. How can yeah. we address that? It's very, and it's very, it is very scary. Mine started at five. I have a kind of joke now. I say new devil levels. So when they come, I'm like, ah, we're jumping, we're doing better. So I had the fun. What I had to learn to do, because a lot of those energies, they're used to walking through you. So that's why you get afraid, right? Of them being stuck. They also know that when your light gets stronger, they get sent in like, come on, we got to get you scared. We got to push you down. One of the things that I learned to do, because you know, when they come, you're very coherent. You're very aware of what's happening. This is not a dream. It's not as if you're very awake. I know for me, I couldn't move. They would paralyze me. I could not move, even though I was very aware. When I break it, this horrible sound comes out of my mouth. So everybody in my house knows what's going on and they see them now. <laughs> so it's like gone. But what I started to do is become very aware. And I'm like, I'm not consenting to you. You're not allowed to be in my space. I would call in for me, usually Archangel Michael, Mother Mary, God, um, the Christ consciousness. And I'd see them like pillars of light come through and all of a sudden the energy breaks. But when you come out of it, you can still feel the energy in the room. And I had to train myself how to do that, to become very conscious, to call them in. Cause you know, at first they start sweeping you away and then it's like, what's happening. And then I, you always have to command them to go out a window. You're like, you have to leave now because mm -hmm. the law of the universe is they can't stay they're only allowed to stay if you consent, but if you don't consent, they have to leave. And I've seen this with, possessions and people and other kind of darker energies, but what people think is they have to stay. And I'm like, no, once you've consented, you can unconsent, <laughs> you can tell them to go. And that's a very scary place for people. So a lot of times, usually I say to people, if there's something you can say before you go to bed, but I had one like four weeks ago again, and I'm like, Oh, we're jumping again. Okay. And again, I called in all the energies was very aware. And I'm like, get out, cleaned it up. And I noticed the next day, all the energy started to move faster and faster through what we were all doing as humanity. So it's a good thing. It's just to have to train, but always say something really good before you go to bed for sure. And do we have to commend them once or multiple times if they insist? Sometimes you have to command them up to three times. So I was like the power of three. So I'm like, I, I say, thank you, God. You say universe, divine or spirit. But I'm like, I'm not consenting. You have to leave now. And I'm like, thank you, God. I'm not consenting. I'm, and sometimes I'll say, I'm sending you back to the universe or God or divine, whatever people want to use back for justice. You have to go now, not consenting. Um, I also recommend to people to keep a bowl of salt under their bed. Because when you have a bowl of salt under your bed, the energy will collect in the salt and it makes here. They don't like salt. I don't know. People don't understand this power of salt that's been going on for thousands of years, but I'm like, these energies don't like salt. So you can break it quicker. And that's why salt scrubs are so important as well. So three times you command it to go. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, can you tell us more about your ND experiences? 
they yeah. have they occur one after another or at the intervals of uh, time intervals yeah they were different times <laughs> so um the first one i was seven and now keep in mind so some say the kidnapping is kind of like a near death i don't know i don't lump it into there but um I was, I was seven and I was in the hospital and they were giving me, I was allergic to everything under the sun. because I was allergic to the world. I didn't like anything in the world. And they gave me a little dose of medicine. I remember sitting there and I just passed out like this and everything went black, but went peace. And I remember the peace and that's all I remembered at that one. And I woke up and of course I'd been crash carded. I woke up, I look at myself and I looked and I'm like, I want to go. I remember as a kid, like, I want to go back to that peace. I want to go back there. Why am I here? Like I was really angry that I was back in that hospital room. And then I, you know, you sort of let it go, let it go. And then the next one I had was actually when my daughter today, her birthday, the younger one, when she was born and I developed a very rare condition and I was totally leaving my body. They were operating blood was flying around everywhere. And I left. And again, all you could see was this at that time, I saw this incredible, it was like that, that light, that space. And I was leaving, but I could hear the anesthesiologist saying, stay with me, come over here. And I'm like, yeah, no. And I'm going over here to this light. And he's like, stay with me, come with me. And then I got, I got put back in, but I still was like, I don't want to be here. Like, I want to go back to peace. That peace feeling came back. But the third one, cause I was a hard learner to wake up was I was actually in my home and I left my body. I can't describe the colors of the sound. And there was this voice that was, I'm like, I'm leaving, I'm going, like I was out of my body. And I'd started to do my work already. I was probably about three years in and it was so magnificent. And I was, I was done. And I'm like, I'm not staying here anymore. I'm done. And I'm a single mom at this time. I'm like, I'm not doing the pain, the suffering. This is just ridiculous. It was so amazing. And this voice said, you have to go back for your kids. We're sending you back. You have a destiny to fulfill. And I'm like, no, no. <laughs> and I literally, I, I popped back into the body. My, my heart was, I, I can't even describe how it was feeling, but what's really interesting is my youngest daughter. So maybe the time she was like seven, eight, she came down home after like that night, she was at her dad. She comes home and she says, mom, I have a bad feeling. I want to thought what happens if I come home and you're dead? Wow. I said, what do you mean? She goes, what happens if I come home and you're dead? I don't want you to be dead. So she didn't know what happened that day, but she did because we were very plugged in. And I said, don't worry, mommy has things to do where this is going to change. And it was at that moment that I came back and I realized, and I always hold on to those colors and music. I wish I could replicate it. And that voice, it was so powerful and so strong. And when I came back through and I, I knew, I knew at all costs, I couldn't get off the path, even though it was still difficult. I had to keep going. And not only for them, I know they were sent in to keep me here, but I knew there was something. And I, I didn't know until, you know, obviously years later, then all of a sudden I end up doing what I'm doing now. And I got it. And I'm mm -hmm. like, okay, but that you can't describe that level of peace. You can't describe that freedom. And that's where I was like, I'm never afraid to die. Cause what's over there is beautiful. And what I saw and I can't replicate it was so magnificent that we'll go back to our light bodies and have fun all day long. Yes, indeed. <clears throat> um, so any connection with God, with source, with divinity was ignited by any use of plant medicine or was uh, innate uh, property yeah. and, and feature of your body? Yeah, it was all my body. You know what? I've never, I've never touched any plant medicine and I, I never went that way. I'm not saying it's wrong for anyone. I, I think part of it, I have two things. One, I had severe reactions to anything in my body. So I, I kind of stayed away from that stuff. But then again, I saw such miracles just by straight connection. It's a little bit harder. Probably I get people like, okay, this is an easy route. I took a little harder route, but I really believe that we need to learn to connect with the God of our understanding, walking down the street, driving your car on the fly. Like we don't have time anymore. It's too great to sit there and go, okay, let me meditate for five hours or let's see what rips off. And I understand the basis behind it. I'm very familiar with plant medicine, but I'm like, we need to be able to connect. Our bodies can connect to that pure energy 24 seven. 
It's like when spirit has a message, it doesn't say, okay, I'm going to wait till you meditate. Spirit's got a message now. You better be able to take the message now. And that's what I like people to understand. And I just, it was pure connection. Interesting. But again, to reach your level, we have to be in tune and you still, we still have to work on ourselves. And, and some of us and me also um, have in mind that this, the use of plant medicine might ignite that, pro those properties and give, get us closer to, to God and enhance these capabilities much faster and ongoing also. Well, hundred percent, because some, that's why they're on the earth. Right. So I'm not like, I'm something you need to go for it. It's like, I'm like, you do what makes you feel good. And that's what I think people really need to remember what's working and making you feel happy. That's what you do. Right. And you see that, and that, that gift will open. And this is how we live. You live this. And I live this. Like, I didn't just wake up and stop. I live this every day. I still do my work every day. Like, you don't think I got triggered what's out there. My inbox is filled with people that are having severe reactions to things they're putting in their bodies. They're panicking. They're scared. You don't think that sometimes has, I have to do a check and I have to go, okay, this is part of the divine's plan, part of the universe to wake up. And I, I'm a human being. So yeah, you got to keep doing your work and there's going to be different triggers and different levels depending on what we're moving through. So we, we have to, you, you don't stop. We live this way. You know that we don't stop. Yeah. Indeed. Are you able to share with us? How did you meet your teacher and how that relationship evolved to open up your capabilities even further? Yeah, quite interesting. So I was looking for things and I got into these meditations and some channel. There wasn't much back there, like 18 years ago. It wasn't kind of like it is now. None of it resonated. And my sister, ironically, who is so close, she is not into this at all. She goes to this event and she calls me and she says, I met this quirky lady. I think you might like her. Nah, not for me, but you might like her. And I'm like, hey, I'm willing to try anything. So her name was Olga and I went to see her. And we spent three hours together and all of a sudden my body was moving and doing this crazy stuff. And, and she had healed herself, although she'd studied different things. She's like, you always want to use your own connection, your own channel. And so we, we became friends and actually I, I would be dead without her. If I hadn't met her, I would be dead. So I knew she was a divine intervention into my life. And then, you know, I just sort of to grow and grow and, and she took a different path. She got very frustrated. And it, it happens to people, right? It does happen. Any of us can fall off the train at any time. Like nobody's, everybody has to understand that. And um, yeah. And she, so she ended up leaving about four years ago and she wanted to go work on the other side. And, but I, I credit if it wasn't for her, I would be dead. I would not be here today. Yeah. Interesting. For sure. And, and she said that. I said that to her, I said, if it wasn't for you, I'd be dead. And she goes hundred percent. So in a <laughs> way you, you continue both your work and her work. I do. I do. And she gave me a foundation. She taught me to always go within. She even told me I'd write four books one day. And I said, you are so full of it. I'm not a writer. So I got two and I have a third one coming out. And I'm like, oh, okay. Cause she could, you know, she saw all that too. And I said, but again, that was, that was like probably 16 years ago. She told me that. And here we are. So all the things in the ethers, we can have them. We can, we can take hold of them. Just don't get into your time and out of your head. <laughs> yes. Uh, you know, there is so much division happening in the world right now based on race, you know, medical classification, political affiliation. So it seems that the level of tension have never been, uh, has never been so high. What's the solution? How do you see this uh, balancing up a little bit? It's going to take some time. I think we're in for a lot of truth bombs over this fall, like a lot of things where people are going to go, what? what that really happened kind of like when i always say it's like a bad divorce you know you go through a bad divorce and you're 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 thinking you're getting to a resolution all of a sudden something else is a gut punch and i'm like we just got to ride through that but we also have to remember that we've been under this energy for over 2000 years and we've been under this control and a lot of it's been under the rug i know where i live so much bad stuff has happened here but people always think oh no, they're so sweet and nothing bad happens there. I'm like, that's where they do lots of bad things. It's an illusion, right? Yeah. So the plant has been to create division, but what I'm also seeing, and we see this in every country, look at the quiet, they're not violent. Look at the quiet protesting of people saying, we're coming together. I want to help you. And it's that energy that's actually going to start to change. Now we know because those 
political systems are falling. They are falling. They're coming to an end, however long it takes to come. They're not looking at these. They don't want to look at the light. It's too much. But anything that is, of, I always teach this, anything that divides and what do they want to do? Divide the family, divide the schools, divide the anti to the pro. It's not about anti or pro. It's about living with love and kindness and humanity. That's what these people are, are we're all speaking it. But anything that divides is always of the dark, always of the dark. So right now we are seeing the darkest time in history. I say we're ready to, we're going through a birthing pain right now, like for women and people have had babies, you know, like when those contractions and it can last forever, right? And you don't forget that pain, but we're birthing something new. And to birth that, we have to pull down the old and the division because people were not aware. They kept their head in the sand. They called us hooey wooies or conspiracy theorists. And they don't want to, they don't want to, because they're so scared, just like we were that, oh my God, their blinders are like this. I don't want to know. I don't know. No, 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 no. Don't tell me the truth that these people have been lying to me my whole life and the systems. So that's where, when the division hits a peak, it will explode and you'll see the crumbling will stop and it'll start to come down like an old building. Funny, we're coming up to 20 year anniversary of some things that had happened in the States. And you look at all those towers, they crumble. Well, that's what's happening around the world their systems are crumbling. So the division, they've had to create division to keep you distracted, but people are not there. Look at how many people from a year ago to now understand what we're saying and are going, I can't do the division. I want my family. I want my friends. And some will never wake up. And some, we are going to see a lot of people leave the planet. And that's part of the, that's part of this new awakening but I really believe you can see the way the energy is with all these people in their countries. It starts to come together. They're all connected like this. The energy of the dark, because that's, that's why they're pushing so hard for division because they've lost. They're here, but the light is here. And if people could see that, they would be like, let's unite, unite. That's their biggest fear is we're uniting and we are. Our hearts are coming together. We want everybody to live in a world of peace, unity, no lack. Like there's no lack in our world. They just no. had an illusion. It's an illusion. And that's why they want division. It's purely dark and turn off mainstream media. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And I'm going to put out a very outrageous thought. I mean, we saw uh, what happened in Australia, what the police did in Australia and UK, uh, even in, in Canada in certain instances. Um, are they real people or they are they, they have some inorganic parts, yeah. components in them because a human being cannot behave like that i mean it's quite inhuman yeah there's two things i see actually so you know a lot of the dark eyes you see in a lot of these people that's a full-on possession and you can see it with a lot of politicians it is a full-on possession so the soul is about six to ten feet out it's been already pushed out they've been taken over so you're not you have to understand you're not really speaking to a human anymore you're speaking to something that's totally taken over the other thing I've noticed and I was speaking about this about four three four months ago in the community I kept getting this little message that would come in going, it's okay to do this. And I'm like, whoa, 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 where are you coming from? That is not get out. I'm not consenting. And I heard some other people in the last week intuitives talk about how they were all getting these messages. And what I've noticed is, so there's a certain one of these that they put in, so we'll be sensitive that actually with the chipping and stuff, they use it as satellite so they can they're controlling thoughts. They're pushing stuff on an energetic level. And I kept seeing it like, a, I, I, I'll just call it something up there in the skies, not to flag anything. Um, but you could see it was coming through the satellites. It's very mind control, very mind control, very much how they control remote viewers. And you could see it coming in and it's programming these people. So yes, a lot of them, they're not there. Their souls are pushed out. So you're not even dealing with a human being anymore. And then there's other ones that I can see, and I've seen them here in Canada too, and Australia, where they're in such fear, they're running on that same line that we would see in like World War II. They're in such fear that they've now shut their whole connection. They have no connection, no feeling, no nothing left, and they've just become robots. And that's about 20% of them. But the other ones, they've been, you can see it's total mind control. And most of them have been pushed out of their body. They're not even in there anymore. Some people could say they're walk-ins. Some people could say they're just actors that will leave over time, but they're definitely, they're not there. And I've seen them even walking down the street and then they'll look like this because they're programmed to look at the aware and they look and I'm like, Hey, I'm not touching you. You stay in the body. We're having nothing to do. And I'll cross the street and they go like this, like robots and they keep going. 
So if you notice and you start to look and look at their eyes and even a client of mine yesterday said, Tracy, I used to really like this person. Their eyes have gone black. I said, yeah, they've been tainted. They've been pushed out to fool you. And she's like, I knew it. I could see it. I didn't want to go around them. And I'm like, don't, don't second guess your intuition. Yeah. Most of them are shut off or kicked out. Yeah. Are they going to become more dangerous to uh, those who didn't um, get the job or people who are awake? Yeah. You know what? There's a shift. I know there's a lot of talk out there that this is going to happen and that's going to happen. And, and I'm aware of it and I get it sent to me every day. But when I look, there's like a, there's a break that's happening. I, I always say between now and the end of the year, we have to look as a break. Is it going to be a tough winter? I think it will be one of the darkest, heaviest winters any of us have walked through for sure. And will walk through, but we need to do this. I don't really feel when I look at the energy, it looks like there's a break. And as the truth comes out, we won't hit that level, but we're probably going to get close. But you have to remember, don't buy in the fear because it looks like it breaks. And then a lot of this starts to crumble. We're even seeing here um, with this narrative, like we're in a, we're in an election where we are right now and they're still trying to dictate, but anybody that knows like those systems aren't even functioning. They're not allowed to function while they're out, but they're not functioning. When you look at it energetically, you're like you guys aren't even functioning. So there's, there's a push and a push and all their dates are around the same time. And I'm like all around the world. If you look at these dates that are all in this September, October, and if they go, I know they want to, I know people in high up government here, they're talking about the global next lockdown. That's where people are really going to get pushed and people are going to start taking back their power. And these people that are drones or whatever you want to call them, you can see they're losing their power. They may not even, they may not even wake up to be able to go to work those days and that's okay. That's their plan. Then that's how they remove them. But I think we're going to, you're going to start seeing a lot of truth come out like a lot. We've seen it behind the scenes, but I think we're going to see a lot come out, especially when they go into the financial markets and they start like the six big banks already put a red flag and said, hold on. We've been saying forever. You can see it. So that'll be another, they've lost in the banking. They've lost politically. And that's going to shift a lot of the narrative too, because people are going to be very concerned about what to do with their money for sure. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I've been expecting that um, failure <clears throat> since two years ago. It yeah, should have just... been 10 years ago. <laughs> yeah. I said it better go this October. I keep saying if it doesn't go by October and I've been saying this for five years, I've been prepping people. I said, if it doesn't go by October, like have your food, have your silver, have your gold, have your crypto. Like I say, if you, if you have your cash, I'm like, if they don't do this by October, then we got a darker winter, but we'll get through it. Yeah. yeah. And not to panic uh, people. If you can no. share, are we going to hit with um a uh, natural disaster or disasters or a huge cataclysm this year as well or that will be for a later date yeah it depends mm -hmm. how much the way i see it, it depends how much truth starts rolling because it's like this energy here that's been holding on for all these thousands of years <clears throat> as they're losing they're trying to throw everything in the kitchen sink at us and what i've noticed is um I've had a lot of visions of things that I don't like to put out there. I have shared it with people and say, you know, prepare, we could see this. And then all of a sudden, you know, a month later, after I've been saying to my close circle, this is what I see, we got to move the energy. Then you hear all these other remote viewers and talkers about it, about these explosions in the world. But if that happens, it looks very minimal and it, you have to understand it's also, again, it's like, it's just to wake people up. They're trying and trying and trying. We are going to move though to, like, why don't we have free power already? We know why we're going to get yeah. that it's coming guys. Why don't we have a simpler way of living? They needed consumerism to be off the charts so they could feed their <laughs> bad addictions. It's going to change. And it is, but I, I don't, I don't like to go into that camp, but what I say to people is I put it this way. I used to cry at night when God would show me, and I say, God, it's God of your understanding or universe. When spirit would show me these bad things, and I'm like, I don't want to see them. I don't want to see them. And I would, I would go into hyperventilation panic because I'd see the good things too. And then when I, I had this incredible encounter with spirit and the Christ consciousness came through and said, one of the jobs that we need you to do is to reset this. One of the things I do is reset the old draconian religious line. Like this is all grown. This is going to have to come out. And I'm like, I don't want to do that. But then the message was, you need to see 
what they're doing over there. So you're out of fear, you prepare and you can kind of sit back and help others. And I got it. I'm like, that's why I see the stuff I don't want to see. And that's why even five years ago, when I was saying to people, have your gold, have your silver, have your extra food. My kids would call it my apocalypse count. Like you're crazy mom. But I'm like, I don't know why. I don't know when, but we need to have this so we can help others and be solid and not in fear. And now it's all unfolding. Yeah. So we- my kids call me crazy for the same reason. So, but I'm okay. I, I can take that because <laughs> again, I, no, I mean, apocalypse, we all have apocalypse counters because we see, and that's our funny joke, but it's like, the, what I say to people is I said, there's going to be a lot of intervention here because you can see that from the good people and all the people around the world working to get rid of this dark mm-hmm. energy. But I'm like, okay, so if food goes up, you don't have to worry about the price. And I said, and if it, it's shorter than what we, we see right now, because timelines can change go help a homeless person, give them some tuna, make some food for your neighbors. Like look at it like that because a lot of these people aren't prepared. They aren't prepared. Yeah. I mean, we had our stash of food. Well, uh, we, we live in, uh, we lived in Canada. We moved to Panama two months ago. So when we left, we gave away all the food, frozen meat, uh, frozen vegetables, uh, anything we had, even water, we gave it away to friends. Even the freezer, we gave it away. So we felt so good that we could help people who some of them needed, some of them did, and they just added to their own stash. But yeah. it was it was okay. We couldn't take that food with us. You know, we, we have to do some good while you can still. Can and still, we still yeah. have to keep doing that. But I say to people, if you're feeling really rough right now, go into service. Mm-hmm. There's people that need your hands right now. They need a good word. They need that. So if anything today, we keep spreading that. We keep waking people up. And I'm shocked at how many people have come to me that were so thinking we're wooey wooey and now like, what do I need to do? And I'm not, I'm not signing that passport thing. I'm not, I'm not partaking. Yes, I did this. I'm, I'm done. What do I need to do? And this is beautiful. And when we keep doing beautiful conversations like you and I are having now and keep seeding, we keep planting the hope and the new stuff coming in the future that people may not be able to understand or feel right now, it makes a big difference, a big difference. Yes, I would like to go uh, uh, more and uh, explore your programs and, and your books. And, you know, synchronicity works in a very interesting uh, way, because just before this interview, I had a very uh, dear friend um, questioning me again about the existence of God and why God allows bad things to happen. And my answer was, let's leave this discussion for a later date. So your book, God, Where Are You? It's Me, comes fits perfectly into this uh, narrative. And I'd I like to go deeper into that and explain what that means for, for you. Yeah, well, because you well, when we were little, we grow up thinking it's some man in the sky. And it never resonated with me. And I was always fascinated with this concept. And I was just like, no one's this sick, this miserable, this depressed, this much trauma. And there's something up there. So that's where I cut it off. The reason I called the book that is because when I started to awaken, I realized for me, it's this beautiful presence of love energy. That's so big, so infinite. It's in you, it's in me, and we can tap into it through our heart. And when I started to realize that, but I also realized it was a communication factor. And I also, because I've been up and I started to see what I was seeing because people ask me this all the time if there's a god then why isn't everything beautiful I had a little guy ask me the other day well there's a god then why do these animals eat other animals and I said well like why are some of them predators right and I said when we come here there's always learnings and lessons and I started to see, and I, I used to take my, my classes and we take them up into this thing where you actually go up to the heavenly realm, you have this experience and you see everybody that you're going to see on earth, all the people you hate, all the people you love, all the people you think stabbed you in the back. But by the time they're done and they come out, they realize that that was their blueprint and their plan to get to where they want to go. And when I started to realize that This energy was with me all the time. I wasn't looking at it. I wasn't paying attention to it. I was brainwashed thinking it was a man that was going to like, you know, I don't know, come down and tell me I'm going to hell or whatever and all that nonsense. And when I started to unlearn that and tap in and I started to learn to communicate 
with a greater presence and trust. Cause I would say trust, no believe because it's hard. Right? If, especially if you're like, I don't know, am I talking to the air? What's going on for a lot of people? I was lucky enough. I could see things. So it makes it easier. But when I started to trust into the presence, all this bad stuff that I had planned, I realized how, wait a minute, I can, I get to make a choice. And when I'm watching the signs and talking, I'm making new choices. I've learned those lessons and all those people what, that I thought were so horrible and we all do it. Oh my God. If I hadn't had that, I wouldn't have the strengths or convictions I have now. So I started to look at it as my earth school. And I was like, okay, this is a different way. This is spirit teaching me. And when we have bad violations, people say, I couldn't reconcile why that bad thing happened to me when I was five years old. I'm like, well, why would somebody do that? But then when I learned, I'm like, well, wait a minute, that opened my gifts. It did in a very different way that were suppressed. So was there trauma? Was there to go over? Sure. But then when I went in, that's why I was like, God, where are you? I realized the God of my understanding is already in me. I was ignoring it. I was ignoring my gifts. I was ignoring my power inside. And when it's our time, it's our time. And I knew that. And when I really reconciled that it's this bigger presence and people are terrified, terrified to tap into the bigger presence because now you become accountable for your life. You become responsible for your life. And you start to realize how much power you have in creating and manifesting. And that is scary for people. As much as they say, I want this and that, now you realize it's all within you and how much difference you can make in the world. So that's why this presence, it's so overwhelming to people because they've only lived in this matrix of fear and it opens that door. And it is a, it's a relationship. It is a relationship. And I have said to people that relationship will never sever again. It will change how I want to. You can come for the journey or not. My family's like, okay, I'll come for the journey. Great. <laughs> you know, <laughs> my ex-husband was like, not coming for the journey. I'm like, okay, I'm out of here, you know. But it's that's when you get that, you start to get this conviction and then you listen to your intuition. And that's where this bigger presence, there's so much deconstruction that has to happen on that religious line. Like it's huge. It's yes. huge. That's a very powerful message. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, and some of your programs, um, let me look at them here. And um, you have, you know, the Miraculous Academy, Soul Sunday Series, Evolutionary Academy, Mastermind. Uh, please tell us, give us more details about uh, one or two, which are very fun. You are very fond of. Well, those are three of my favorites. Why Soul Sundays? Because we're building a foundation where um, it's going to be coming out. Soul Sundays will go in there. All that money goes to help people. And we're opening a foundation to help with children. And once people see the vision and they hear me talk about it, they're like, oh my gosh, we want a holistic integrative. Will not be in North America. <laughs> um, so, you know, we have the plan. We have the developers. We already know what's happening there. So I love that. It's just inspiration. But my two... I couldn't see, it was very difficult for me. I was booking nine to 10 months out, 30 people a week. I just couldn't do it anymore. And we were helping so many other people and teaching. And so I opened the Miraculous Academy and then the Evolutionary Mastermind. The Miraculous Academy, I'm with people literally seven days a week. They have videos every day. I'm teaching, teaching you how to be empowered, telling you what's going on on a day-to-day -day basis. Like we're very interactive. We have a telegram group that sometimes I'm on there like seven, eight times a day. Like this is what's happening. This we got to do. But there it's a community of people around the world where they're constantly, I need help for this, or maybe this is happening. So we really know what's going on. And I love that. And then we had people that wanted to go really, really deep. So we did the mastermind. We keep it smaller, but that's where... I'm, I always say we an hour a week, but we're always two hours a week. Again, we have our telegram group, but they're building their dreams, their visions. And, you know, we have a woman in there and this is what warms my heart. If you saw her a year ago, leaving an abusive marriage, like shy, oh, in here, like this teacher. And she is now, she is speaking on those platforms. She's all out there, like going to power her rights. Like you guys got to stand up and get chills. Like this is what spirit's doing, moving. So when people want to really come out of their shell, because I push you and you get triggered because we don't want to stay in things. And so I tell you what's coming, but I also shift with you every day. And I'm always making sure, you know, the tools. So I'm like, if you listen to what I'm saying, if you listen to the body, so my thing, my programs are to empower you. So you're your own, you're your own little guru, your own little master. No one else is that we're all equal. And then we build a community around it. So if you need something and I'm there, like people say to me, how are you on? You are constantly 
there for us. And that's what this one lady, Christine, she said, I couldn't have done this. Like you're, you're there. And I made a promise. If anybody, if I can say this, why I love these programs. When I started my journey, as you can imagine, 18 years ago, I was alone. I only had Olga. Nobody understood me. I would cry because nobody, I had no one to talk to. I just like other than her. And, you know, she had a busy practice and I was like, but she became my friend. And I said, one day, one day I'm going to build a community that no matter what they're going through, they never have to feel alone, crazy, different, abandoned. And I look, and that's what we have today. Spirit, spirit did it. Spirit did it. Beautiful. And I'm honored that uh, I have the chance to um, promote your programs and uh, hopefully more people will, will join and uh, realize their full potential and um, connect with, uh, with God and, and source. Yeah. And I can't thank you enough because it's, it is, it is good. programs like this, us doing podcasts and coming together. This is going to be the new news. I put that seed out there every day. This is going to be the new way. The old news is over. People are going to want to know what did that tarot reader have to say? Or what did that remote viewer or what's going on in the world? How can we make something better in this country and that country? And I want to say one thing that I've seen for many years, and I, I see it so clearly now. Our borders are going to dissolve because you know, as an aware person, we all go, we just live on earth. Why do we need all this documentation? And why do we don't belong to a country, even though we know how that evolved? I actually, I've said that forever. And I saw just a couple of days ago, the borders of the world just melting timing. I don't, I don't know, but it's going to happen in our lifetime. Yes. And I give this example uh, now and then is like, my country is amazing. No, 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 no. My country is more beautiful than yours. That means that God created one portion of the earth uh, in a way to please certain people. And the other part, he didn't want to put too much thought into it uh, because he wanted to punish those guys living there. No, earth has its own charms at every single location. And we have to appreciate that and enjoy. Each place has its own energies and we have to go and pay respect to the spirit and the energy of the place. And people don't understand that. And that's going to come out. They're going to get it. And I love that you said that because I, I see it, you know, whether like, look at certain animals live in parts of different worlds, right? We travel there to see them or oceans or rainforests. And, you know, maybe people want to come here where it's minus 50 and, you know, like igloos and like, I lived up in a native reserve. So I know about cold and, and igloos and stuff, but I'll tell you it's, it's coming and this is exciting and people need to get excited about that because we come together all division borders dropping yeah tracy this was a lovely interview and a lovely chat uh we are approaching the end of uh, our interaction here any final thoughts i just want to say that as i know i said this is going to be a heavy winter filled with truce it'll be the best most invigorating time of your life if you can stay grounded centered, focused, keep connected to things like what's happening here to keep your vibration high, because this is also the most incredible manifesting time. So you have everything inside you that you need to create what you want and don't let anyone stand in your way. No more, just go for it and you'll see. Yeah. Thank you. And one more thing, because again, this will address my uh the young generation we we talk about do they need the v considering the fact that they are young they are healthy they have a very good immune system because some of them have, are pressured by the the society by friends um by school um yeah. is that necessary or they can reject it with uh, with having peace of mind yeah um <clears throat> Well, we've all seen some science. I'll quickly say, I know where I am. These, it was said the children never, they have great immune systems, nothing affected them. But just the other day where I am, 103 children now have major heart problems, which should be a flag just in the province I'm in. It was in mainstream media, so I have no problem saying that. But the reality is in my energetic opinion, I don't really see anybody needs and I know for, you know, I have to be careful I say that, but it's like, you know, and follow the science, follow the data, 99.9% .9 recovery rate. That's been out there since day one. 
um, not for the children. I children were small. I would be the mama bear saying, you're gonna learn from home, then we will do whatever it is at all costs to stand and not that. And I'm not anti anything, actually, I'm not. I'm not anti that. But when I look at the energy of this, but I will say one thing, if for people listening, don't go into the fear where you hear the people say that all these people are gonna go, it's not gonna happen. It's not going to happen. There's something I'm seeing in the bodies with the people that have had this, that is truly miraculous that, that they put out there. And I get it. It's science. If you go above to the energy, the energy is stronger than the science. I'm seeing the bodies actually start to figure out on their own because they know what to do, how to work with this and dissolve it like a traditional one, like a flu shot and get it mm -hmm. out. I can't explain it, but I'm seeing it for the first time now. And I know we're going to see, yes. People have to go, but it's going to be way less than what they thought. And we have some huge intervention. So don't go into the fear of it. Love your people that are there and keep your children out of it if you can. Yeah. I love the positive uh, message. Thank you very much. Thank you once well, again for, for being here today. Thank you so much. What a pleasure. What a pleasure. So many and, blessings. Thank you. And for my viewers, uh, thank you for watching. I like it. Share it. Um, support me on uh, patreon.com slash uh, Claudia Morgan. Download a free copy of my book when you visit my uh, website. And until next time, love and gratitude. <laughs>